Viper once said to Maverick, you fly jets long enough, something like this happens. Well, this story was so incredible, even Viper may have been surprised. Hi, my name is James, and I'm the curator at Libero.com. Today, I'm going to tell you the tale of the Cornfield Bomber. The F-106 Delta Dart was a stalwart symbol of American air power during the height of the Cold War. Designed for speed, the jet was the primary interceptor for the U.S. Air Force beginning in 1959, with its primary mission being defense against Soviet bombers. It was sleek and advanced with an internal weapons bay and sophisticated radar. But on February 2, 1970, the F-106 would become the center point of one of the most unique crashes in aviation history. In fact, the word crash doesn't even really apply. On that day, a four-ship flight was scheduled to take off from Malmstrom Air Force Base in Montana for an air combat exercise. Perhaps an omen of what was to come, one of the jets had a chute malfunction on the ground, and so what was to be a 2 versus 2 aerial combat exercise became a 2 versus one Now playing the role of solo aggressor, Captain Tom Curtis positioned himself in a head-on engagement with the remaining aircraft. Closing in at full afterburner, at a speed approaching Mach 2, he pulled his F-106 into the vertical and began a rolling scissors engagement with Lt. Gary Faust. Trying to stay with Captain Curtis, Faust's aircraft entered a post-stall gyration, which led to an unrecoverable flat spin, with the aircraft slowly rotating around its nose. Lt. Faust remained in the aircraft to approximately 15,000 feet while the other pilots tried to give him spin recovery procedures over the radio, including setting the throttle to idle and trimming the control surfaces to a takeoff setting, notably a setting that is also used for landing. With his recovery attempts unsuccessful, Lt. Faust ejected from his presumably doomed aircraft. But the F-106 had other plans. The weight reduction and center of gravity change resulting from the removal of the pilot, coupled with the blast of the ejection seat, caused the aircraft to recover from the spin and begin a level flight, leading to a memorable quote from the third pilot, Major James Lowe, when he radioed Lt. Faust and said, Gary, you better get back in it. Already trimmed for landing, the F-106 settled down on flat ground near Big Sandy, Montana. Ground effect cushioned the landing and the Delta Dart slid out gently on the snow-covered field. A local sheriff quickly arrived on scene and contacted Malmstrom, where he received instruction on how to idle the engine and shut off the master switch from the cockpit. But unfortunately for the sheriff, the F-106 was not done with its adventure, as the hot engine melted the snow and the aircraft began moving, ultimately sliding an additional 400 feet before finally running out of fuel. The Air Force dispatched a recovery team and the aircraft was sent to davis monthan Air Force Base for storage, but was ultimately upgraded and returned to service. If interested, you can still see the Cornfield Bomber today on display at the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Dayton, Ohio. To learn more about the F-106 or support our work, please subscribe to the channel. If you love aviation and aerospace history, please come visit us at Libero.com and consider becoming a patron for access to even more interesting and exclusive content. All links mentioned in this video are included in the description. Thank you for your time and consideration, and we hope to see you again soon.